Welcome to Slothful Slumber, the podcast where we transform the vast knowledge of the internet into a gentle lullaby for your mind. I'm your host, Luna Dreamwell, and I'm here to guide you on a journey to tranquility through the soothing cadence of Wikipedia articles. Each episode, we'll delve into the most wonderfully mundane and sleep-inducing topics, helping you drift off into a realm of serene dreams. So find your comfortable space, close your eyes, and let the dull hum of information carry you into a restful slumber. Now, let's embark on tonight's voyage of tranquil learning as we explore a topic so peacefully uneventful it just might whisk you away to the land of dreams. This Wikipedia article is titled Paper. Paper is a thin sheet material produced by mechanically or chemically processing cellulose fibers derived from wood, rags, grasses, or other vegetable sources in water, draining the water through a fine mesh, leaving the fiber evenly distributed on the surface, followed by pressing and drying. Although paper was originally made in single sheets by hand, Almost all is now made on large machines, some making reels 10 meters wide, running at 2,000 meters per minute and up to 600,000 tons a year. It is a versatile material with many uses, including printing, painting, graphics, signage, design, packaging, decorating, writing, and cleaning. It may also be used as filter paper, wallpaper, book end paper, conservation paper, laminated worktops, toilet tissue, currency, and security paper, or in a number of industrial and construction processes. The papermaking process developed in East Asia, probably China, at least as early as 105 CE, by the Han court eunuch Kai Lun. Although the earliest archaeological fragments of paper derived from the 2nd century BCE in China. The modern pulp and paper industry is global, with China leading its production and the United States following. History The oldest known archaeological fragments of the immediate precursor to modern paper date to the 2nd century BCE in China. The pulp papermaking process is ascribed to Kai Lun, a two-end-century C.E. Han court eunuch. It has been said that knowledge of papermaking was passed to the Islamic world after the Battle of Talas in 751 C.E., when two Chinese papermakers were captured as prisoners. Although the veracity of this story is uncertain, paper started to be made in Samarkand soon after. In the 13th century, the knowledge and uses of paper spread from the Middle East to medieval Europe, where the first water-powered paper mills were built. Because paper was introduced to the West through the city of Baghdad, it was first called Baghdatikos. In the 19th century, industrialization greatly reduced the cost of manufacturing paper. In 1844, the Canadian inventor Charles Fennerty and the German inventor Friedrich Gottlob Keller independently developed processes for pulping wood fibers. Early Sources of Fiber Before the industrialization of paper production, the most common fiber source was recycled fibers from used textiles, called rags. The rags were from hemp, linen, and cotton. A process for removing printing inks from recycled paper was invented by German jurist Justus Klaproth in 1774. Today, this method is called dyinking. It was not until the introduction of wood pulp in 1843 that paper production was not dependent on recycled materials from rag pickers. 
Etymology. The word paper is etymologically derived from Latin papyrus, which comes from the Greek papuros, the word for the Cyparis papyrus plant. Papyrus is a thick, paper-like material produced from the pith of the Cyparis papyrus plant, which was used in ancient Egypt and other Mediterranean cultures for writing before the introduction of paper. Although the word paper is etymologically derived from papyrus, the two are produced very differently, and the development of the first is distinct from the development of the second. Papyrus is a lamination of natural plant fiber, while paper is manufactured from fibers whose properties have been changed by maceration. Paper making, chemical pulping, to make pulp from wood, a chemical pulping process separates linen from cellulose fiber. A cooking liquor is used to dissolve the linen, which is then washed from the cellulose. This preserves the length of the cellulose fibers. Paper made from chemical pulps are also known as wood-free papers, not to be confused with tree-free paper. This is because they do not contain linen, which deteriorates over time. The pulp can also be bleached to produce white paper, but this consumes 5% of the fibers. Chemical pulping processes are not used to make paper made from cotton, which is already 90% cellulose. There are three main chemical pulping processes. The sulfite process dates back to the 1840s and was the dominant method before the Second World War. The craft process, invented in the 1870s and first used in the 1890s, is now the most commonly practiced strategy. One of its advantages is the chemical reaction with linen produces heat, which can be used to run a generator. Most pulping operations using the craft process are net contributors to the electricity grid or use the electricity to run an adjacent paper mill. Another advantage is that this process recovers and reuses all inorganic chemical reagents. Soda pulping is another specialty process used to pulp straws, bagasse, and hardwoods with high silicate content. Mechanical pulping. There are two major mechanical pulps, thermomechanical pulp, TMP, and groundwood pulp, GW. In the TMP process, wood is chipped and then fed into steam-heated refiners, where the chips are squeezed and converted to fibers between two steel discs. In the groundwood process, debarked logs are fed into grinders, where they are pressed against rotating stones to be made into fibers. Mechanical pulping does not remove the linen, so the yield is very high, greater than 95%. However, linen causes the paper thus produced to turn yellow and become brittle over time. Mechanical pulps have rather short fibers, thus producing weak paper. Although large amounts of electrical energy are required to produce mechanical pulp, it costs less than the chemical kind. De-inked pulp Paper recycling processes can use either chemically or mechanically produced pulp. By mixing it with water and applying mechanical action, the hydrogen bonds in the paper can be broken and fibers separated again. Most recycled paper contains a proportion of virgin fiber for the sake of quality. Generally speaking, de-inked pulp is of the same quality or lower than the collected paper it was made from. There are three main classifications of recycled fiber. Mill broke or internal mill waste. This incorporates any substandard or grade change paper made within the paper mill itself, which then goes back into the manufacturing system to be repulped back into paper. Such out of specification paper is not sold and is therefore often not classified as genuine reclaimed recycled fiber.
However, most paper mills have been reusing their own waste fiber for many years, long before recycling became popular. Pre-consumer waste. This is off-cut and processing waste, such as guillotine trims and envelope blank waste. It is generated outside the paper mill and could potentially go to landfill and is a genuine recycled fiber source. It includes de-inked pre-consumer waste, recycled material that has been printed but did not reach its intended end use, such as waste from printers and unsold publications. Post-consumer waste. This is fiber from paper that has been used for its intended end use and includes office waste, magazine papers, and newsprint. As the vast majority of this material has been printed, either digitally or by more conventional means, such as lithography or rotogravure, it will either be recycled as printed paper or go through a de-inking process first. Recycled papers can be made from 100% recycled materials or blended with virgin pulp, although they are, generally, not as strong nor as bright as papers made from the latter. Additives. Besides the fibers, pulps may contain fillers such as chalk or china clay, which improve its characteristics for printing or writing. Additives for sizing purposes may be mixed with it or applied to the paper web later in the manufacturing process. The purpose of such sizing is to establish the correct level of surface absorbency to suit ink or paint. Producing paper. The pulp is fed to a paper machine where it is formed as a paper web and the water is removed from it by pressing and drying. Pressing the sheet removes the water by force. Once the water is forced from the sheet, a special kind of felt which is not to be confused with the traditional one, is used to collect the water. When making paper by hand, a blotter sheet is used instead. Drying involves using air or heat to remove water from the paper sheets. In the earliest days of paper making, this was done by hanging the sheets like laundry. In more modern times, various forms of heated drying mechanisms are used. On the paper machine, the most common is the steam-heated can dryer. These can reach temperatures above 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 93 degrees Celsius, and are used in long sequences of more than 40 cans, where the heat produced by these can easily dry the paper to less than 6% moisture. Finishing the paper may then undergo sizing to alter its physical properties for use in various applications. Paper at this point is uncoated. Coated paper has a thin layer of material, such as calcium carbonate or china clay, applied to one or both sides in order to create a surface more suitable for high-resolution halftone screens. Uncoated papers are rarely suitable for screens above 150 LPI. Coated or uncoated papers may have their surfaces polished by calendaring. Coated papers are divided into matte, semi-matte, or silk, and gloss. Gloss papers give the highest optical density in the printed image. The paper is then fed onto reels if it is to be used on web printing presses or cut into sheets for other printing processes or other purposes. The fibers in the paper basically run in the machine direction. Sheets are usually cut long grain, that is with the grain parallel to the longer dimension of the sheet. Continuous form paper or continuous stationary is cut to width with holes punched at the edges and folded into stacks. Paper grain. All paper produced by paper machines, such as the Fordrenier machine, are wove paper. That is, the wire mesh that transports the web 
leaves a pattern that has the same density along the paper grain and across the grain. Textured finishes, watermarks, and wire patterns imitating handmade laid paper can be created by the use of appropriate rollers in the later stages of the machine. Wove paper does not exhibit laid lines, which are small regular lines left behind on paper when it was handmade in a mold made from rows of metal wires or bamboo. Laid lines are very close together. They run perpendicular to the chain lines, which are further apart. Handmade paper similarly exhibits decal edges or rough and feathery borders. Types, thickness, and weight. The thickness of paper is often measured by caliper, which is typically given in thousandths of an inch in the United States and in micrometers in the rest of the world. Paper may be between 0.07 and 0.18 millimeters, 0.0028 and 0.0071 inches thick. Paper is often characterized by weight. In the United States, the weight is the weight of a ream, bundle of 500 sheets, of varying basic sizes, before the paper is cut into the size it is sold to end customers. For example, a ream of 20 pounds, 8.5 inches by 11 inches, 216 millimeters by 279 millimeters. Paper weighs 5 pounds, because it has been cut from larger sheets into four pieces. In the United States, printing paper is generally 20 pounds, 24 pounds, 28 pounds, or 32 pounds at most. Cover stock is generally 68 pounds, and 110 pounds or more is considered card stock. In Europe and other regions, using the ISO 216 paper sizing system, the weight is expressed in grams per square meter, grams per meter squared, or usually GSM, of the paper. Printing paper is generally between 60 GSM and 120 GSM. Anything heavier than 160 GSM is considered card. The weight of a ream, therefore, depends on the dimensions of the paper and its thickness. Most commercial paper sold in North America is cut to standard paper sizes based on customary units and is defined by the length and width of a sheet of paper. The ISO 216 system used in most other countries is based on the surface area of a sheet of paper not on a sheet's width and length. It was first adopted in Germany in 1922 and generally spread as nations adopted the metric system. The largest standard size paper is A0, measuring one square meter, approximately 1189 by 841 millimeters. A1 is half the size of a sheet of A0, that is, 594 by 841 millimeters, such that two sheets of A1 placed side by side are equal to one sheet of A0. A2 is half the size of a sheet of A1, and so forth. Common sizes used in the office and the home are A4 and A3. A3 is the size of two A4 sheets. The density of paper ranges from 250 kilograms per cubic meter, 16 cubic feet, for tissue paper, to 1,500 kilograms per cubic meter, 94 cubic feet, for some specialty paper. Printing paper is about 800 kilograms per cubic meter, 50 cubic feet. Paper may be classified into seven categories. Printing papers of wide variety. Wrapping papers for the protection of goods and merchandise. This includes wax and craft papers. Writing paper suitable for stationary requirements. This includes ledger, 
bank, and bond paper. Blotting papers containing little or no size. Drawing papers usually with rough surfaces used by artists and designers, including cartridge paper. Handmade papers, including most decorative papers. Hungry papers, Japanese paper and tissues, all characterized by lack of grain direction. Specialty papers, including cigarette paper, toilet tissue, and other industrial papers. Paper stability. Much of the early paper made from wood pulp contained significant amounts of alum, a variety of aluminium sulfate salt that is significantly acidic. Alum was added to paper to assist in sizing, making it somewhat water resistant so that inks did not run or spread uncontrollably. Early papermakers did not realize that the alum they added liberally to cure almost every problem encountered in making their product would be eventually detrimental. The cellulose fibers that make up paper are hydrolyzed by acid, and the presence of alum eventually degrades the fibers until the acidic paper disintegrates in a process known as slow fire. Documents written on rag paper are significantly more stable. The use of non acidic additives to make paper is becoming more prevalent, and the stability of these papers is less of an issue. Paper made from mechanical pulp contains significant amounts of linen, a major component in wood. In the presence of light and oxygen, Linen reacts to give yellow materials, which is why newsprint and other mechanical paper yellows with age. Paper made from bleached craft or sulfite pulps does not contain significant amounts of linen and is therefore better suited for books, documents, and other applications where whiteness of the paper is essential. Paper made from wood pulp is not necessarily less durable than a rag paper. The aging behavior of a paper is determined by its manufacture, not the original source of the fibers. Furthermore, tests sponsored by the Library of Congress prove that all paper is at risk of acid decay because cellulose itself produces formic, acetic, lactic, and oxalic acids. Mechanical pulping yields almost a ton of pulp per ton of dry wood used, which is why mechanical pulps are sometimes referred to as high yield pulps. With almost twice the yield as chemical pulping, mechanical pulps is often cheaper. Mass market paperback books and newspapers tend to use mechanical papers. Book publishers tend to use acid free paper. Made from fully bleached chemical pulps for hardback and trade paperback books. Environmental impact. The production and use of paper has a number of adverse effects on the environment. Worldwide consumption of paper has risen by 400% in the past 40 years, leading to increase in deforestation. With 35% of harvested trees being used for paper manufacture. Most paper companies also plant trees to help regrow forests. Logging of old growth forests accounts for less than 10% of wood pulp, but is one of the most controversial issues. Paper waste accounts for up to 40% of total waste produced in the United States each year. Which adds up to 71.6 million tons of paper waste per year in the United States alone. The average office worker in the U.S. prints 31 pages every day. Americans also use in the order of 16 billion paper cups per year. Conventional bleaching of wood pulp. Using elemental chlorine produces and releases into the environment 
large amounts of chlorinated organic compounds, including chlorinated dioxins. Dioxins are recognized as a persistent environmental pollutant, regulated internationally by the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants. Dioxins are highly toxic, and health effects on humans include reproductive, developmental, immune, and hormonal problems. They are known to be carcinogenic. Over 90% of human exposure is through food, primarily meat, dairy, fish, and shellfish, as dioxins accumulate in the food chain in the fatty tissue of animals. The paper pulp and print industries emitted together about 1% of world greenhouse gas emissions in 2010 and about 0.9% in 2012. Current Production and Use In the 2022-2024 edition of the annual Pulp and Paper Capacit Survey, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, reports that Asia has superseded North America as the top pulp and paper producing continent. FAO figures for 2021 show the production of graphic papers, continuing its decline from a mid-2000s peak to hover below 100 million tons a year. By contrast, the production of other papers and paperboard, which includes cardboard and sanitary products, has continued to soar, exceeding 320 million tons. FAO has documented the expanding production of cardboard in paper and paperboard, which has been increasing in response to the spread of e-commerce since the 2010 S. Data from FAO suggests that it has been even further boosted by COVID-19-related lockdowns. Future. Some manufacturers have started using a new, significantly more environmentally friendly alternative to expanded plastic packaging. Made out of paper and known commercially as paper foam, the new packaging has mechanical properties very similar to those of some expanded plastic packaging, but is biodegradable and can also be recycled with ordinary paper. With increasing environmental concerns about synthetic coatings, such as PFOA, and the higher prices of hydrocarbon-based petrochemicals, there is a focus on zane, corn protein, as a coating for paper in high-grease applications, such as popcorn bags. Also, synthetics such as Tyvek and Teslin have been introduced as printing media as a more durable material than paper.